the drum. And you hear the shaker ray. It's time for the Griot Storytelling Circle. Today we're celebrating the season of light. This is a time when the year is dark and we light up our lives with candles and lights and celebrations. And so in Africa, an African girl told this, said this prayer and it goes, O oh, thou great chief, light a candle in my heart so that I may see the rubbish therein and brush it out of thy dwelling place. Christmas is a time for celebration, but it's also a time to remember. And so there are books to help you remember what Christmas used to be like. In our early years of our country, when African Americans celebrated Christmas, they had a celebration they called Junkanoo. And you can read about it in this book called Irene Jenny and the Christmas Masquerade. Irene Jenny is sad on Christmas because her mama and her papa aren't there with her. But she gets some excitement when the Junkanoo Parade comes to her plantation and a special surprise at the end of the parade. And then in early 1900 Baltimore, Cheetah and her family are celebrating Christmas. And Cheetah wants a Christmas tree that she specially picked out with her papa. And you can read about that in Cheetah's Christmas tree. Now, they say Christmas is a way for all of us to celebrate giving and sharing. And there's one person who is kind of the symbol of giving, and that's Santa Claus. Well, there is an African-American story about Santa Claus that says Santa didn't only give presents to children. And that's the story of Santa gives Christmas to the animals. Once long ago, before Moses was placed in the basket in the river, and before Columbus discovered this country, there was Santa Claus. And Santa Claus went all around the world giving gifts. And one year Santa was thinking and he said, I wonder what the animals think about Christmas. People forget all about them. I think this year I'm going to give the animals a Christmas. And that's what Santa did. He thought about it and thought about it and decided that he would give the animals a present that everybody liked. Everybody liked something different, something new. And so Santa thought, I will let the animals choose a way to change how they look. Santa got busy, and soon he had a tree that had all kinds of tails and wings and other things that would make the animals look different. Santa sent the word out across the forest. Come to the big fir tree at the edge of the North Pole on Christmas Day. And early that morning, all 
all the animals gathered around this very different tree. And Santa Claus said, ha, this is Christmas just for you animals. There was the elephant there and the lions and the rabbits and the deer. And Santa said, for this Christmas, you may choose anything from this tree to make you look different. Well, the animals were just like people. They didn't want to admit that they didn't like the way they looked. So none of them stepped forward to ask for something from the tree until a little tiny mouse walked up to Santa and said, Santa, I'd like to have a pair of those little brown wings. <laughs> well, of course, said Santa. And he took down the wings and Santa's magic he attached those wings to that mouse, and the mouse went flip, flop, flying away. And that was the first bat that was ever in the world. Well, once the mouse started, all the other animals followed, and they were choosing tails and wings, and Rabbit said, Santa, my ears are too short. I can't hear a thing, so I want some of those long ears. And that's what happened. And now you see rabbits with very long ears. It wasn't long before all of the parts were off the tree and there was only one animal left. It was the reindeer. Well, what do you want? Santa asked the reindeer. I just want to live with you, said the reindeer. And that's what happened. The reindeer went to live with Santa. And from that day on, it was the reindeer who went with Santa on his Christmas trip each year, pulling the sleigh, that magical sleigh, that took toys to boys and girls around the world. And that's what happened when Santa Claus gave Christmas to the animals. Well, it is more than Santa Claus for us who believe in Christmas. And you can find out that another special thing to do at Christmas time is to sing. So bring out your singing books and gather your families around. One of them you might enjoy is this one, What a Morning by Ashley Bryan. And it has African American spirituals that tell the story of Christmas. And one of them is a song that you could Put your own words to a song like Mary Had a Baby. Mary had a baby, yes, Lord. Mary had a baby, yes, my Lord. Mary had a baby, yes, Lord. The people keep a coming, but the train done gone. Now, I don't know what that means. The people keep a coming, but the train done gone. But that is how the song was sung long ago. And we still sing it that way today. And then you could add some new words to tell the Christmas story. So you might sing, what did they name him? Yes, Lord. What did they name him? Yes, my Lord. What did they name him? Yes, Lord. The people keep a coming, but the train done gone. The people keep a coming, but the train done gone. You make up the words and add it to this Christmas spiritual. 
I enjoyed Christmas all the time. But one special Christmas that I had was a Christmas in Africa. I celebrated Christmas in the Gambia, which is on the west coast of Africa. And remember I told you in our other story circle time that that's where Alex Haley found his family. That was the first time that I went to the Gambia. And in that time, it was Christmas. And I went to visit a college friend's family. And it was different from my Christmases with cold and snow. Christmas in the Gambia was sunny, and we were walking on the beach, just like probably uh, are here in the States in California. And on Christmas Eve, we all went to midnight mass and sang some of the songs that we sing here for Christmas. And then a very special parade happened after we came out of church. Down the street came lighted boats. No, not great big boats that you could get in, but model boats that had been made and candles were put on the boats and lights were strung on the boats and they paraded through the town after midnight mass. And that wasn't the end of the special celebration. On Christmas day, suddenly there was music and sounds coming down the street and a crowd of people came along with the dancers. There were dance clubs who came from, who went from house to house dancing and singing. And they had one special dancer who was all covered in straw. And he would spin so fast that it looked like a hurricane. <laughs> and that was what happened when I celebrated Christmas in the Gambia in West Africa. Well, there's another special story that comes to us from West Africa. It is the way they tell the Christmas story in Liberia, West Africa. And in Liberia, they speak English, but they speak what we call pidgin English. Now, this is a kind of broken English where you'll understand what I'm saying, but there is one phrase that I want you to know about. And that phrase is, when your heart lays down. Now, you know about how your heart, you can tell when something's going on with you. If your heart is beating very fast, in Liberia, they would say your heart turns over. But if you are calm, if you are at peace, then your heart lays down. And this story of the Christmas story tells about a time when every man's heart lay down. Long time passed. Before you papa live, before you papa's papa live, long time passed. Before them big trees live, that time God live. And God looked down on the world what he done made and God be mad too much. Now God's small boy go before God's face and say, Pa, make it that I go. I walk with the people. I talk with the people, and by and by, they walk your way. 
And when God looked down on him small boy, God's heart lay down. Now, God called Mary to be mama for him small boy. Now, Mary be new wife for Joseph. And first time, Joseph mad too much. Him heart turn over. But God say, Joseph, this be God's work. And then Joseph's heart lay down. Now, in a far country, shepherds watched their sheep at night when all at once the night make bright like day and God's angels are in the sky. And God's angels say, be glad, be glad, O oh people. God's small boy be born in Bethlehem. And the shepherds go to Bethlehem and they bring new rice for present. And they find the small hut where Mary and Joseph and God's small boy be born. And everyone look on God's small boy and everyone's heart lay down. Well, that's how I hope you will feel this Christmas holiday season, that your heart will lay down, you will be at peace, you will enjoy your family and friends and that is the wish we have for the whole world. This is some of the uh, Christmas scenes that I have found in uh, West Africa when I was traveling there. And this one is from, Mex from Peru in South America. So all over the world, we're celebrating Christmas and celebrating what we want for our world. Peace, love, and joy. And there is a poem written in 1942 that is still true today. It was written by Frank Horn, and it's called Kid Stuff. The wise guys tell me that Christmas is kid stuff. Maybe they've got something there. 2,000 years ago, three wise men crossed a continent chasing a star, looking for a kid born in a manger and with an idea in his head. As the bombs crash around the world today, the real wise guys know that we've all got to go chasing stars, hoping to get back some of that kid stuff born 2,000 years ago. And I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from your griot, Sister Martha Ruff. <laughs>